you have no idea how many people go, hi, <laughs> and they're waving uh, and grinning or thumbs up or that kind of reaction. It's part of the delight of driving something like this. It, it adds to the pleasure. I certainly wouldn't say it's the thing, but it adds to the experience. My name is Jack Charney. I drive an Isetta 300, 1957, actually that I bought new in 1957. It's hard to say what the best thing is that I like about the Isetta, <clears throat> because I have to tell you, I love its looks. I love the looks everybody else gives it when they see it. I love the way it starts, just boom, and it's running. I like riding in it, I like driving it. I, I like it. Oh, I'm a knitter, oh, of course. And I said to myself, you know, I've knitted one of these, one way or another, for every one of my uh, motorcycles. And I think the Isetta demands a sweater. So I got to thinking about it, how to do it. Well, what I decided to do was an interior, the exterior and the backside. And I've had more fun wearing it. It's fun. People say, where the hell did you get that? Or who made that for you? And I have to say, I did. <laughs> <laughs> We were walking by the BMW agency in Santa Monica. We were thinking about getting another car. And I happened to look in this window and I said, what is that? And it was the only car in the showroom. <laughs> Just this funny little, I had never seen one. We went in, I looked at it. It was a hard sell. I said, I'll take it. And <laughs> drove it for back and forth to work, as a matter of fact. We were living here in the mountains in Topanga, and I rode it, drove it, into Brentwood every single day. It was a wonderful driving experience. I took it back into BMW for service, <clears throat> which I had been doing, uh, because the motor was, it wouldn't, was not running right, let's put it that way. And when I went in and I said, I think it needs a tune-up, and the man looked at me and said, we don't work on those anymore. What do you mean you don't work on them? It's a BMW. I'm looking at the front door, the emblem. Sorry, we're not importing them and we're not servicing them. I didn't know where to go, what to do, but we had a friend, a woman who every time she came over said, Jack, if you ever decide to sell that car, let me know, I'd like to own it. So I called her and I said, Janie, you have to understand, it's not running right. I don't know where you're going to take it, uh, but fine with her for $350, gone. About a month went by and she was on the phone. And I said, how's my old car? And her answer was, oh, that goddamn thing. Well. I didn't want to hear that, but nevertheless, the rest of the story was that it stalled in the middle of an important intersection in Pasadena. It wouldn't restart. So she just opened up the door and left it right there in the middle of the intersection. She walked home, her phone rang, and some unknown person, some guy, uh, said, hey lady, I pushed your car over to the side of the street, but I'd like to buy it. She said, okay gave him the, the address, he came over, and she handed him the keys, free. That was the end of my car. Uh, <laughs> the gas shortage, 1972, came, and I thought, why did I sell my Isetta? So I started looking for another, and I found one ad in the Sunday Times I rode down to uh, Long Beach, where the guy lived. 
and oh, the, the car was, that was a bad thing. He asked me where I lived and I told him, Topanga, you must know Marilyn, he said. Well, I have no idea who Marilyn is. What's her last name? I don't know. What's her phone number? I don't know. What's her address? I don't know. But she was the one who had the Isetta and Messerschmitts and Henkel club of the world. Can you imagine that? And she lives in Topanga? Couldn't believe this. Anyway, he said, wait a minute. I think I have her information here in the desk. I got home and I called her immediately and she said, come right over. I went over in the morning and saw this bunch of Isettas and Messerschmitts and it, it was mind blowing. Through her, I did buy another interim uh, Isetta, refurbished that, uh, that didn't work out well. It just wasn't a good runner. Then she and her husband, my partner and I, were out to dinner one Saturday night, and she said, oh Jack, I got another Isetta. Do you know I was almost angry. Here she is <laughs> with all these, and I had searched so long for one. She said, but wait till you see it. It's a deluxe, the most loaded Isetta I've ever seen in the club. Well, I could hardly wait to see it. So I dashed over there the next morning, <clears throat> and sure enough, here was this, well, then it was pink and white. It was so faded, and she kept saying, do you think this is your old car? And I'm saying, impossible. Mine was red <laughs> and gray, and, but nonetheless, we got to the car, and she said, are you sure? Let me get the license plate number. So she climbed over to the top and got the license plate number. And because I always make, out a, make up a little ditty for every license plate, if I intend to remember it, NNJ741 and thought, now if that were mine, what would I, what would I dream up? And I thought for a moment and said, New New Jersey 740. Oh my God, that's my old license plate. That's my old car. Didn't haggle, but I begged, <laughs> uh, please sell it back to me. And after about two weeks, she said, yes. And I bought it back. As a matter of fact, from the time I sold it to the time I repurchased, it had gone less than 25 miles. The best thought is the fact that I decided to get one again, joined the club, and found my old car. I think that's just so unbelievable. 